Hey guys, we're back in the garage again, and today we're gonna be working on this thing. I know, really exciting, eh? A fridge, yeah, but there's something special about this fridge. It's a propane fridge. Yeah, this is a console. It doesn't need any electricity to run. Here's my, uh, my propane tank. Got my regulator there. And I'll show you, this one's actually running right now. If you see right down in there, You'll see the pilot and the burner and the electrode, all that stuff. So yeah, I got this thing running and uh, I got it cooling down now. I just threw these uh, thermometers in here. Oh, look at that. Zero, that's good. And then what do we got in here? We got plus five. So hopefully that gets colder, I guess. We're not in the food zone, guys. Guys, we gotta get in the food zone. I'm just trying to get the freezer going and uh, uh, just testing this thing out for the first time. But I should close this door. There we go. But I got two of them. There's another one right here. This thing was a package deal. I got both of them. Both of them for 200 bucks. The exact same model. Model CQE22ASV. So yeah, we got this one running. Seems to be cooling, freezer is going down below zero, which is good. So, uh, yeah, this one. So this one I haven't really touched yet. And I don't know if it runs. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, the way these fridges work is inside these coils, there is ammonia. So what's happening here is there's ammonia in here. It's being cycled through the burner. It's not burning the ammonia, it's, it's a sealed ammonia system but it's boiling the ammonia. That pilot light and that um, flame there is boiling the ammonia inside this closed system and it's an absorption refrigeration. So it's going up into here and it's stealing all the heat from inside the refrigerator. I'm probably not doing the explanation justice on how a propane ammonia absorption fridge actually works, but that's not what I'm here to do. Uh, today, I'm just going to do some maintenance on this fridge and try to get it running. So yeah, if you look down here, not looking so good. Everything's corroded. Looks like the electrodes busted off. Busted off in two places. That's not even gonna ignite it. It's too far away. And then look at this. Where's the wire? Ah, oh, here's the wire. So, gotta replace that. I actually got a, an electrode from a barbecue. How much is this? $7.99. Probably have to cut the end of that off there. That electro is a little too long, but hopefully that works for me. And I was taking a close look here, and the thermocouple, this is the thermocouple here. It goes around here all the way over to here. If you see right there, but there's a pinch in it, and it's pinched. It looks like it's broken. I'm trying to get it to focus. Maybe I'll have to get a new thermocouple. Maybe I can get a universal one, I'm not sure. Regardless, we're gonna do some maintenance on the fridge, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can fire this one up too. And yeah, the idea is to hopefully uh, sell this one and make a profit, and basically get this fridge over there, the one that's already running, for free. All right guys, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the flue, and the flue is basically the chimney. This piece here, carbon monoxide, is gonna exhaust through this uh, this vent here. It's not a direct vent model, but I don't know. They say it's a safety vent system. It's just supposed to burn in your house in an open living space. I don't know how safe that actually is, but uh, some of them are hooked up to a uh, carbon monoxide detector that'll shut it off if there's any, uh, if there's too much carbon monoxide in the air. Uh, but yeah, maybe I, when I hook up this fridge where I want to put it, I might do like a direct vent system so I can kind of exit that exhaust out of my living space. But anyways, I'm going to take this, uh, this flue off and then show you uh, how we clean it. You need something like this, like a chimney brush. So what I did was I went down to the barbecue store and I picked up this. So if you see that there, it's like a little chimney brush. So I got that and I took it all apart. I bent it all straight. And now, now I've got a flue cleaner. 
See, I'll show you guys. So yeah, that's all you're gonna want to do. <coughs> uh, it's kind of a tight fit. That's good. It means it's working. Next, you're gonna want to take this out. So this, this thing is called the strangler. And all it does is restrict the flow of the exhaust in that little pipe there. So yeah, we'll have to clean that up with a wire brush. But you're also going to want to run this chimney brush down through the burner box here. So I got the strangler all cleaned up there. I just wanted to show you guys. No more carbon deposits. And for this rod, I'm probably just going to use some sandpaper because I'm afraid my wire wheel will catch it and twist it and break it. And then this thing, this is aluminum. I think I'm going to hit this with the wire wheel. All right, guys, so I got that all cleaned up. I'm just going to blow some uh, compressed air down through this pipe, the flue and the uh, the burner stack here just to get any uh, crud or dust that's in there uh, just get it all out of there and the next step is to take off this burner and disassemble all this stuff here so actually first I'm going to take off the the electrode all right now I'm just going to disconnect the the main gas line here from the valve. And then I'll remove the, I guess it's the pilot jet. I'll have to get that in some uh, some Varsol. Hopefully uh, that's not all clogged up. And then I guess this is the mixing tube. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just take off this burner element here. And in order to do that, I have to take out these bolts here. Just loosen them up and the burner will fall right out. All right guys, the next step, I'm going to take out the thermocouple. And I'm just gonna be really careful not to uh, break the line there that's pinched. Um, I don't know, I, I think I'm probably gonna have to replace it anyways because it's pinched or crimped in that one spot. But anyways, I'm just gonna be careful while I'm taking it off there. And there you go, there's the thermocouple. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna take out is this gas valve here. I've already got it loose here. Um, and just so you guys know, this valve, um, when it's in line with the valve, then it's open. And when it's uh, not in line with the valve, that's closed. Uh, so that's pretty standard on all valves. Uh, but yeah, to take this off, it's a union fitting. Just loosen that up there. You don't have to turn the valve, it's not gonna work anyways because it hits all the other stuff, but just loosen it there. Pull the valve out. And then inside here, it's got a little Allen key. And that just comes out there like that. And lastly here, I'm just gonna take off uh, this fitting here. Inside here, this is the switch that the thermocouple triggers. And I think there's a magnet in there, and I don't know, I guess it's like a millivolt system. I'm not exactly sure how it works. So here's all the parts that we removed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start soaking them in some paint thinner. Actually, this one, this uh, main gas line, they say to kinda tap it out a bit. Just bang it on the ground a little bit, just to get out any, uh, any uh, deposits that are inside of here. And then, uh, yeah, throw the burner in the paint thinner too. Yeah, so after I throw it in the paint thinner, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna wire wheel it up a bit. Take the stuff over to the wire wheel and clean it up a bit. All right, so I had all my parts there soaking for about 15, 20 minutes or so. And basically, I'm just gonna take them out one by one. I'm gonna clean it up with the wire wheel and then uh, blow it out again. Okay guys, now just moving on to the burner tube here. So I just wanted to show you what I'm doing with this because this one kind of requires a little bit of special attention. Get a pipe cleaner. Uh, so I've got this one here. Now let's just make sure it's long enough there. 
yeah it looks like it'll go all the way to the tip and you're gonna want to feed that through there and try to get it in there as far as you can see look at that look at all that dirt that just came out so another thing is that apparently spiders love the smell of propane they just love it so they like to come in here in this tube here hang out in there and just make a mess of things so yeah so make sure you get a pipe cleaner and clean down inside there and once that's done you're going to want to take some compressed air again to make sure all that crud's out of there and any spider webs anything like that and then blow through the back side all right guys now it's time to check this uh, refrigerator that we already have running so uh, i threw some uh, thermometers in there and uh, i turned it down a bit because it was running a little bit too cold so uh, let's check the thermometers now Take a look in the freezer, and what do we got here? Minus 15 on the Celsius, so that's okay, that's good enough to keep the food cold. And what do we got on the, the fridge here? Yep, yeah, we got plus one, two, I'd say one, two and a half. I think that's good though. For the fridge and the freezer, that's a, that's a good temperature for me. Uh, so I think that's good. I'm just going to check the flame here at the back. How's this doing? Yeah, so that's on low. There's two stages to the burner. There's like a there's like a fired up one, a high burn and then like a low burn when it's just chilling. So that's basically like the low the low burn. But yeah, let's check the the thermostat knob on the front here too. So yeah, this is the the coldness thermostat for the fridge. So I got it turned down. I got it turned down like almost past past one, almost at defrost. So I've got it pretty uh, cranked down pretty low there. So, but that's good. I like the temperatures that the that the fridge is at right now. All right, guys. So now that we have all our little bits and pieces um, all cleaned up from the wire wheel and the um, paint thinner there we got to reassemble it all. So we got to reassemble it all to this main valve here and set up the burner over here. Uh, but the very first step is to, well the first step I'm going to take is to reinstall this um, this uh, union joint here. Um, so basically before I go ahead and put it in, I'm just going to blow out the valve uh, for good measure just to make sure there's no uh, dirt or anything in there. That should be good. And uh, right inside here, this is where the uh, the main the main shutoff valve for the gas or the the main gas line comes in right here, and it actually takes a filter. So I was taking a look in the manual, and you can buy a filter from uh, Danby or Console or Unique, um, but it also says in the manual that you can use a cigarette filter so that's what I got here make sure you guys get a cigarette off one of your buddies there and I just peeled back the the paper on it there and basically I'm just gonna cut it to fit inside here that should be good there so before I go ahead and screw in the uh, the union fitting right there uh, I'm going to put a little bit of this Teflon tape on the threads there just to make sure I get a good seal. I don't want any uh, gas leaks or anything like that. That should help seal it up a bit, but I'm going to go one step further. And this is the really necessary part. I'm going to use some of this uh, thread sealer. So uh, yeah, I'll just slap some of this on there just to fill up all the gaps in the threads there. And I'm just going to use my allen key and put this back into the valve all right next I'm gonna install the main valve here uh, into the union fitting and again I'm just gonna use some Teflon tape around the threads there and then go in with a little bit of thread sealer um, after I use the Teflon tape there
All right, next I'm going to install the fitting for the thermocouple, but also the switch uh, for the thermocouple there. Uh, so yeah, so this one just goes right into here. And then this fitting uh, just follows in behind it. But again, I'm gonna use the Teflon tape uh, as well as the thread sealer. All right guys, so I've got our uh, new barbecue sparker here. And I've also got the kind of tie down clip uh, that held in the, uh, the old igniter or electrode in there. And I'm gonna see if this new barbecue sparker is gonna work for us. Let's see. It's definitely too long. Gonna have to cut that down. But let's just see if this will hold her down. Pretty snug. I think that might do it for holding it down. All right, I'm gonna remove this little tab thing here and then uh, cut this electrode to length. I'd say about here. All right, guys, check it out. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's a good position for it. So yeah, next step, I'm just going to take the old wire and connect it to the new one. And it looks like there's just a crimp fitting on there, so that should be pretty easy. I got my uh, wire crimpers here. I got the end of this uh, original wire stripped off here. I even got a little bit of heat shrink uh, just to make this really nice. So now it's just time to test it and see if it actually works. So let me just press the button here. Yeah, looks like it's working. Perfect. Okay guys, so the next thing I'm gonna do is install the strangler. And it actually just clips on right there. If you can see that there, that hook. And the next thing to go on is this gasket, and then finally, the flue pipe. So that just slips in between there like that. And then I'll bolt that down. So it's really important to level these fridges before you fire them up because um, if they're not level, they can overheat and they won't run properly. So if you see here, I've got it level from side to side. And then you also got to make sure it's level uh, front to back there. So one more really important step that you're going to want to do here. So before you go and try to light this fridge, you're going to want to test the fittings and all the connections that you have put together and just make sure there's no leaks. So in order to do that, all you got to do is get some soapy water. Get some soapy water and start spraying all the connections. So yeah, just make sure you spray all the connections and all the fittings and take a real close look at all of them and make sure nothing is leaking before you go ahead and try to fire uh, your propane fridge up. So I got the gas on, I got all the valves on, and I'm ready to fire this fridge up. So I just want to show you on this side the procedure and this knob I'm going to want to turn to this little flame icon which is the pilot um, and then the thermostat I'm going to want to turn so that's the lowest defrost one two three I'm going to want to crank that all the way up what I'm going to do is now that I have this in the pilot position I'm going to hold this down and that's going to start allowing gas to flow through the system and as I'm holding this down, I'm going to press the button here. That's the sparker. And I'm gonna set you guys down back here. And you guys are gonna watch the burner and see if it, see if she lights. Oh, it looks like she's lit. 
I'm just gonna hold the pilot knob in for a few seconds so it uh, heats up the thermocouple. Yeah, I just put in the old thermocouple that was broken. Hopefully it's gonna work for us. I don't know, we're about to find out in a couple seconds here. So I'm gonna let go of the, the pilot knob and let's see if this, uh, this flame stays lit. No, it went out. Yeah, so it looks like our thermocouple is bad. All right, guys, even though the thermocouple doesn't work, I want to see if this fridge works. So what I did was I took the thermocouple off of the other fridge, the one that I already had running. So I know this thermocouple works and I put it into this fridge just so I could test this fridge, just to see if I could fire it up and, and get it running. So I've got it already installed and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the procedure of lighting it again and hopefully, hopefully she fires up. Yeah, the pilot's lit. All right, I just let go of the pilot button and the flame's still lit, so that's that's really good. So yeah, now I'm gonna leave it and let it run for a little bit and then we'll see uh, how cold it actually gets. All right guys, so we've had this fridge uh, running for a little bit now and now it's time to see what the temperature is inside the freezer. Oh wow, look at that, minus 30. Wow, that's pretty cold. Let's check out the fridge. Wow, minus 15, that's really cold. Well, that's good. We definitely know this fridge works. So yeah, that's actually a little bit too cold for the refrigerator. Yeah, as soon as I started it, I cranked it up all the way to the coldest setting. So what I'm gonna wanna do now is turn this down and we'll take a look at the flame. Yeah, so now you can see the flame. The flame is much smaller, so I already got to know the other fridge a little bit and basically you can turn this thing way 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 down and it'll still create a cold temperature or a minus temperature a freezing temperature in the freezer and still keep it relatively cold in the fridge the fridge should be like just above uh, zero degrees uh, Celsius yeah super happy with that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna post this fridge online and sell it and then I'm gonna keep this fridge for myself overall I really like these propane fridges I think they're really cool they don't need any electricity to run which is super awesome and great for off-grid I'm impressed with how little propane they actually use to run and how quickly they actually come to like a minus or freezing temperature so yeah super cool i'm really happy with the way these fridges turned out um yeah and if you guys like my videos make sure you like comment and subscribe and don't forget to check out our new merch head over to our merch page we've got t-shirts hoodies stickers so definitely check that out and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next video